What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about SPDs or surge protection devices. that we need to know about surge protection is that the 2020 National Electrical Code just updated, it changed a whole bunch of things, and now surge protection is required for new services or even if you're replacing an old service. In the 2017 code, we had two different articles. We had 280 and 285. 280 dealt with surge arresters, and that was really anything 1,000 volts or more, um, or surge protection, SPDs, was anything under 1,000 volts, and that was in 285. So they've taken both of those articles out. They've created a new article 242, and that encompasses all of it, and they're calling it over voltage protection, which is kind of cool because we've always had 240 as over current protection. Now we have 242 as over voltage protection, so we're able to... Uh, kind of protect our service or our electrical installations for both. Now back in 2009, uh, UL actually changed the language. There used to be a term that was TVSS, which stood for transient voltage uh, surge suppression, and that was changed to SPD, which is uh, surge protection devices. Uh, you don't really need to know that, but that's just kind of, uh, you're probably gonna come across some like receptacles, some some point of use devices. They just look like plugs, kind of like a GFI really. Um, they have a little light on them and they say TVSS on them. Just know that's like an old device, but it's the same kind of thing. What surge protection is not, is it is not lightning protection. It's not overcurrent protection. It's not short circuit or ground fault protection. So we need to know that if something, uh, we have a ground fault or a short circuit or if lightning hits our homes, that's not what a surge protector is there to protect against. A surge protector is really there to minimize and kind of dampen the effects of a surge event. And there's difference between surges and spikes. Both happen in a system, uh, but it's, it's there to kind of cut an overvoltage spike or an overvoltage uh, transient current that comes into the system. So that is where things get a little bit muddy and confusing trying to figure out what that is. Overcurrent protection is when you have too much current and that's what a breaker or a fuse does is if there's too much current running through a conductor, it is able to break that circuit and stop that current that overcurrent from destroying equipment. So there's been this need to have an over voltage protection as well, because it's not just current changes that fluctuate and destroy equipment, it's voltage changes as well. So just understanding that all of this deals with voltage. Now this is the confusing part. If you go to pick up a surge protector from a store, it's gonna be rated in amperage. It's not an amperage device. It's, it's rated at a certain amperage, mainly because lightning strikes are, made, are, are rated in a certain amperage. So a lot of times you have lightning strikes that are kind of average around like 60,000 amperes. It can get up to like 150, 200,000 amps. But it's most of the time, these lightning events that are gonna happen are, are tens of thousands of amps. Now I need to clear something up. A second ago I said that surge protection has nothing to do with lightning but now I'm talking about lightning. So surge protection does protect against surges that are caused by lightning in a system, but generally like really far away, not a direct strike on a building. So that was that is something that you would need lightning protection for. There's entire lightning protection systems out there with like a metal rod up on the top of a structure that filters down to like some ground rods so it can take a direct strike and kind of redirect it down to earth. That is not surge protection. Surge protection just protects against the surges coming through the lines. So sometimes lightning does hit electrical systems. It hits poles, it can hit transformers, it can just hit the ground, raise the potential nearby. But there's a whole bunch of different things that lightning does do far away. And that creates surges inward. So when I talk about lightning and I say lightning has nothing to do with surge protection, and then I sit and talk about lightning, that's what I'm saying is lightning affects the system as a whole but usually really far away. Um, and then, you know, not, not the actual structure itself. So you would also need a separate lightning protection system if you were worried about your home directly getting stricken by lightning. Oh, that's what you mean. Most of the time, a utility surge as well. If there's like a capacitor switching or if they're, you know, disconnecting and reconnecting, uh, utility 
switches, that can be a massive spike all of a sudden of tens of thousands of volts because you're talking about lines that are at like 7,200 volts. And these systems, when they switch on and switch off, it can create a huge voltage drop in the entire system or a voltage spike in the entire system. So again, this is all around voltage. So don't let the ratings, there's like joule ratings too, which are really like nonsensical way to talk about one of these devices. But understand, this is all about voltage, 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 voltage. It's not about current, although voltage changes that fluctuate inside of a system are going to change the current as well. The, the voltage and current um, have a relationship that if you change one value, the other one changes as well. So it's just a little bit misleading on the marketing. And then to make things even more confusing, you have terminology that is kind of interchanged frequently. So uh, you'll see things that are surge protection devices in their packaging at a store that say surge arrest. And it's like, well, wait, I thought the National Electric Code said that surge arresting was a thousand volts or more and it's usually at the utility side that that's installed whereas surge protection is less so there's just a lot of misinformation and i think if you ask the average electrician or homeowner or builder or anybody what does a surge protection do uh, a device do they're going to say oh it protects for lightning so if lightning hits your home it is very unlikely that a surge protector is going to protect your home that is a direct strike on your home and that's not taking the lightning and putting it down into earth that's flooring tens of thousands of amperes at tens of thousands of volts hundreds of thousands maybe all the way through your electrical system it's not going to protect against that and it's probably going to blow up the surge protector the surge protector is meant for surges not for strikes surges but also surges and spikes so the difference between a surge and a spike is really that a surge is kind of uh, what they call a a, uh, a ring wave so it's an event that uh, in the middle of a sine wave kind of has this little bit of a flutter. It's a little bit longer event that happens. And then you have an actual strike and that's what they consider an impulse. So an impulse is on a, side wave, on a sine wave, you have this little blip and it's a huge spike. So these two different things come from two different places so that you can have a spike. Usually spikes are from external things. It's from utility, it's from lightning, but it's just this boom, this all of a sudden crazy flash that goes through the system. What a surge protector is, is a device or a component that's specifically designed to take in a transient surge and minimize the impact of that spike or that surge. It's basically when there's too much voltage that's being sent into something, it kind of cuts off the tops and bottoms. So it evens everything out a little bit. So that over voltage is still going to be an over voltage that, that gets to your piece of equipment, but it's not going to be as high and as impactful because over time, like surges happen all the time. Every time your air conditioner kicks on, it sends, you know, there's a voltage drop or a voltage spike and it sends inrush current anytime a motor starts up, but it goes through your system. And every single time, if you don't have surge protection put in place at very specific loads, all of those surges are over time just going to chip away little by little at the the efficacy or the life of that piece of equipment so something that might have been designed to last for 10 years may only last five years because over time you have these switching loads constantly and you have the utility company transformers blow and there's a surge there and every time they reconnect power that's another surge there and so a surge protecting device is really something that's meant to just help the longevity of your system by minimizing any kind of incoming or outgoing surges that are coming into the system. And how they work is they take those surges, they kind of act like a magnet and they take any extra voltage and they divert it right down to earth. That's why having a ground rod is really important. That's why all these devices need to be attached to neutral um, because they actually need to be on a grounded conductor and that's where that voltage cycles through. Now there are four different types of surge protectors out there. There's type one, type two, type three, and type four. And uh, each one is, is a different class because of where it's located in the circuit um, or you know, like where it is in your home or outside of your home or whatever. But the location is key. So a type one device is really meant to be either on the line or the load side of your service disconnecting means. So right where your service entrance conductors come into your service, they are rated to be on the line side or the load side of your main breaker or your main disconnecting means. Now, that would kind of mean that you'd have to like tap conductors into where your service entrance conductors are coming into the lugs. And you can't do that for code. You can't have like 
this tiny little number 10 or you know number uh, 12 or number 14 wire that we're double tapping in so the language of where this is allowed to go is kind of silly in how they describe it. Um, but a, a, a type two is meant to be after that uh, overcurrent protective device. So on the load side of the service disconnecting means. So really what the thing that's most important, because again, it's confusing, like, t you know, t type one, technically we can put it on the line side but that's not what you're going to do to install them. You're never going to like disconnect live conductors that are coming off of your meter going into your main breaker and like tap these conductors in there. What you're, what it's, it's meant to do is just to give it a different class because for type one, you're going to have overcurrent protection already integral inside the device. Whereas type two typically needs to have overcurrent protection to, to protect that device itself. So type one, a lot of them have like little fuses or something on the inside of them. So if something happens, uh, it has a way to disconnect power on its own. Whereas type two, you really need a breaker. You need to hook up into a breaker so that, you know, if there's too much current going through that device, it'll actually trip a breaker. That's really the big distinction between the two. Seems silly. Both of them, you're just going to put in your service panel. Um, to try to protect right where your service entrance conductors are and where your bonded neutral and grounding electrode uh, are at. Type three is a point of use device and there's a couple of different things like this, but typically what a point of use device is, is what we see as a power strip. Now, don't be confused, a power strip that's a splitter, like a multi-outlet assembly where there's like, you know, a cord that plugs into the wall and you've got like six outlets on it. That's not a surge protector. That's just a splitter. That's a multi-outlet assembly. It's designed to make one plug turn into six plugs. That's not a surge protector. For that to be a surge protector, there actually has to be a surge protection component inside of it. And it needs to say surge protection or surge arresting or whatever branding these companies are gonna put on it, but it needs to say that it protects against surges. So most of them come as multi-outlet assemblies as well, but a lot of them have a light on them. And they have a lot of extra information and ratings and stuff that make it a surge protection device. So just know that putting plug strips on your computer is not gonna help unless it's actually rated for surges. Then type four is really something that has nothing to do with us. It's kind of more for like manufacturing, um, but really you're talking about like components that are not UL listed assemblies that you can buy off the shelf and use as a surge protector. It's anything that would be like integral into a computer or into a dryer that's got a whole bunch of electronics on it. A lot of times these companies will actually put their own uh, surge protection inside of it and that's a type four surge protector. So that's really not gonna affect you as an electrician so much. Now Schneider Electric actually recommends a two-stage approach to surge protection, um, which I think is kind of smart, but you need to have like a main whole house uh, point of protection out at your service and then having locally any kind of important equipment that you want to have extra protection on like you know any computer equipment or like xbox or tvs or anything like that that are really really important and have a lot of sensitive electronics in it having some kind of point of use device there as well it's just better protection and what they say is like a lot of the commercial buildings and in industrial buildings that they um, put surge protection in there's actually an entire flow of all of these different types of surge protectors all along the way. So like each motor might have its own protection and a lot of their stuff actually has monitoring. So you can actually see like a counter of how many surges come in within a month. And if you see like quadruple the amount one month, that might mean that your motor's going out or something like that. So that's kind of, they're taking a commercial technology and kind of squeezing it into homes with this. So we don't need as crazy of protection, but it is a good idea to have multiple types of protection if you're gonna do this in the first place. All right, my friends, hope that was uh, very comprehensive and uh, kind of straightened a lot of things out. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Like I said, this whole topic is a pretty muddy, dirty topic to get through if you start Googling and trying to read a little bit more into how these things work. And it's just really confusing, the marketing messaging, the manufacturers, all of it. It's, it's a really messy subject. So I hope that that cleared a little bit of it up. Uh, I am gonna do another video in the future um, relatively soon where I'm going to go a lot more in depth, talk about very, very specific things, how these things work. Um, you know, talk about the fact that there are variable resistors inside and um, just the component side and what the different spikes and surges look like and the waveforms and all that stuff for all of you nerdy people out there like me <laughs> that just like this stuff. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for your attention. Appreciate it. Love you. And I'll see you in the next one.